I'm here with Nick Cato. How are you yeah. doing, sir? Good, yourself. From SBC... SBC Industries. Oh, SBC Flashing. That's a different... <laughs> part of it. All part of it. <laughs> Nick does all our uh, laser engraving, all our special edition Yeti products. We just cut our templates for spraying the top of our, uh, of our studio. This is like our mobile kind yeah. of... Go That's up, better than the trailer. Roll anywhere and do anything. Do I still need this? No, you don't. Now I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who are you? Where are you from? I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, originally. Where's that? That's Midwest. Like Midwest. Midwest. Yeah, middle of the country. So how did you find yourself um, in Florida? Moved down to Tampa on a whim with my dad when he wanted to move to Florida when I was okay. a junior in high school. So we moved down there. Um, Graduated high school, went to college at UCF. That's where I met Monica, my wife. Uh, also, my hiding. partner who's inside there. <laughs> and uh, once I met her, moved down here, and we decided that we were going to. UCF, gonna, what's that? University of Central Florida. In Orlando, oh, okay. College up there. So I came down here, and uh, we started taking over her dad's company. Um, which, oh, is, which isn't this one. It is this one. Oh, it is this yes, one. Right, yeah. okay. And so what we did is we make roof penetration flashings out of stainless steel. He came up with the idea of back. 35 years ago. Um, and a flashing's what? Uh, basically, the roof penetration flashings are anything that penetrates a roof on a commercial roof has to be waterproof or flashed in. Ah, uh, so we make okay. stainless steel components that go around each one of those uh, penetrations, custom form fitting. And he came up with that idea? Yeah, he came up with the idea to actually make them out of stainless steel. Uh, what have they made with before? Well, they do pitch pockets or rubber boots or you know stuff that doesn't last or hold up well, especially in South Florida. Yeah. Um, so the stainless steel really. It's funny. I'm fu obviously I'm from the boat industry, which you dabble in a little bit. Yeah. But everything in Florida seems to rust and corrode and go quicker than anywhere else in the country. Yep. This is why <laughs> the Miami-Dade County building code is one of the strongest. If you're Miami-Dade County approved, which we are, then you pretty much can go anywhere in the country and you know serve your product. So. Um, the, uh, yeah, so he started that, uh, doing that. When I started here, we were still doing everything by hand. So all the, all the templates that you see up here that are uh, stencils, basically, for uh, all the products that we make. And we would shear and manually cut and use tools and uh, equipment to manually cut everything and Sharpie markers and prick punching for locations and everything so this like that. Is, this is cheating. This is a lot of cheating. <laughs> so when... Uh, when we, when we took over, we started seeing an opportunity to grow our production and become a little bit more efficient. And so now the laser, we bought it just to cut our stainless steel. This is an expensive material. piece of kit, right? Yeah, this is uh, rather expensive. And then the- Eight by, so four by eight sheet cutting Yeah, we, we actually ordered the first laser we have, we have three lasers now, um, but the first laser we ordered custom size to accommodate a four foot by 10 foot sheet of material. Uh, and that was a, a first for the company that actually makes the systems to make one to that size. And we ordered it like that and so that we could cut our full sheets and that's what we would use in this. And that material we make our stencils out of is the same material we make our flashings out of. So we have hundreds of sheets of it on hand at any time and that's what we really, that's our main bread and butter is cutting that material. Um, but the laser actually does so much more. It etches and engraves and cuts yeah. wood, plastic and all these different things. Did right? you know you were going to be into lasers? What did you study no, when you were I mean, college? I was marketing and I've always... Oh, okay. uh, Enjoyed. So nothing related to this at all. No, but I've always enjoyed building things, taking things apart, figuring how we can build them better, put them back together, you know, cars Your hands? and Fine. Yeah, he's no, semi-man semi -man <laughs> hands. Mine are girl hands. Yours are... No, I had a couple cuts on there. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you just started You fish as well, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, so you've yeah. got that roughness with yeah. the uh, computer edge. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what a working man, a modern, a modern working man's hands should look like. I guess so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I shake a lot of fishermen's hands and they've got calluses and oh, yeah. cuts and digits like, like sausages and you're like, yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's yeah. like, I guess, that's a good one for a house. That's charter boat captain style there with the, the oh, real okay. hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> Do it for the fun on the weekends. So but flashings was the core of the business. Correct. And still is. Uh, oh, okay. Mainly. And then the laser etching job shop, you know, got to spawn from that. It's kind of, uh, one of the funny things was, is my father-in-law, when we would say, well, we can, you know, that's a lot of money to spend on just something to cut the parts out. We can do it by hand. Well, we can do so much more. Like what? Like what was his big comeback? And so then yeah. when we started doing it, 
it was like, well, like a lot of stuff, we can do this, we can do legend, you know, signs and signage and cutting letters and doing different things for other companies. So every time we get a, a big order or do something different or wild or crazy, we'd say, hey, like what? <laughs> so we would, you know, Is that's still kind of- in the business? Uh, no, not actually. He, about last year he retired and he's still, you know, we still, communicate with him and everything. He's, he's at home, he sits on the back porch and he has another nice shop down check. the street here that he, he controls uh, <laughs> from the back porch and you know everybody calls him at home and packs his stuff from home and that's his office now. So, so how long was this running for? We've been in business for about 35 years. Uh, hell. I started here in 2006 and we got our first laser around 08, around 08, 09. And then um, from that point, we just kind of grew into a laser job shop, offering it up to a bunch of different people, different companies. We did body armor material for a while, um, military contract kind of stuff, and different things that just you don't think about once you buy it. Now, one um, of the things that I have to, I'm going to help promote you here, because you can do things that you wouldn't necessarily think you can, like cut acrylic with a, la with a freaking laser beam. Yeah. You always think you have to go to a water jet or to a handsaw or whatever yeah, a it is. CNC router or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But you can do it with laser. Correct, yep. And it actually creates a fire polished edge on the material. So, so you what, don't have to go around and do it manually either? No. Oh, no. Okay. So a CNC router will leave a bunch of chatter marks, we yep. get a nice smooth, smooth consistent edge. So when it comes to like small letters, detailed oriented stuff that we would be able to uh, achieve a quality that surpasses a, a, late, you know, a router. And it also, you know, nice sharp turns, it's a hairline cut. So uh, any inside radiuses aren't rounded off by a, the round bit that would be so on a CNC router. Lasers are the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty awesome. God. And so this isn't, this has become, I guess you're, it's your own business, you're here 12 hours a day, it's yeah. six yeah, days. So we, yeah, seven. we've officially taken over, you know, the past uh, year or so. And, uh, you know, it just keeps growing with the laser stuff and uh, we keep getting more inquiries. Like for instance, we, you know, a couple of years ago, two years ago, we weren't doing Yeti Cups. No, I mean, um, I, but I think when I first came here two, three years ago, yeah, it wasn't, I mean, you've got, What's that production line over there? Yes. Yeah. Five, six people. That's yeah. That wasn't there when I first yeah. started. So. <laughs> it was just you, wasn't it, back then? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I went by myself, my shop manager, and um, then maybe one other guy helping out. That's one of the things I quite like coming here because I see your progression. I, I can see. Yeah. You can see, sometimes I can see how really how tired you are. You're, you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're quite awake today, yeah. but um, it's just it's quite encouraging seeing a couple work hard. And, Yep. I know it's never easy, but actually seeing it. Yeah, it's nice to push it move. along and have it roll. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, yeah, you see, a lot of Florida people don't work hard yeah. at anything. They never turn up on time, they never do the job. Oh, there's plenty, plenty of work hard. here. I mean, if you, if you want it, there's plenty of work. More that's work than always, you can handle. It, that's what we've always said. My brother, girlfriend, and so on. If you turn up on time and do the job you say you'll do within the time frame you'll, you said you'd do it, what a simple concept, huh? It's a simple concept, but in Florida, <laughs> it excels. And so yeah. I, I always hold you up as a good example whenever I'm talking to people. Yeah. I, d yeah. I do talk you up quite a lot. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> we get a lot of, um, a lot of, you're not from around here, are you? You didn't grow up down here. <laughs> oh, you, well, yeah. it's the Midwestern yeah. attitude. Yeah. That's, so that's one of the main things I've always maintained. Anybody from the Midwest who's down here, trust them because they are, they've got, I don't know, salt grit, they, they, they work hard, they, yeah. they, they've got that mentality. Anybody else from anywhere else in the country is just here to slack off. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they, you just proved my point once again. So again, so how do you find time to do stuff that's not at work? How do you break that work-life balance? Leave work early. <laughs> <laughs> Which you're trying to do today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, you know, just try and, you know, leave work at work, you know, that's one of the things we it's very easy to get wrapped up, especially since uh, my wife and I work together. Yeah. We, you know, live together, work God, together, yeah, drive to work together. Whole... However, you know, our, our son, that you saw running around here, you know, you actually, you've just kind of seen him grow up a little bit, you know, coming in here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we bring him to work with us every day. So we immerse ourselves in work when we're at work. And we try and focus on it while we're here. And once we go home, we try not to talk about it, dwell on it. You know, and you can, you know, leave here at five o'clock. Do you have like know, a safe word? No, not really. <laughs> Somebody starts, one of you starts talking about bitching about a customer. No. <laughs> Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> no, we, uh, no, we do just try and maintain a good balance of leaving work at home and, uh, you know, leaving uh, work at work and home at home. And, and it seems to, you know, if, help. If you've managed to strike that balance, I'm, I know a lot of people who find that exceptionally difficult. Yeah. Because it is just an evolving. 
Yeah, and one of the things we do step. is you know just st simple steps like cutting yourself off when you know when I'm not at work, my I don't answer my emails. I, I see it, and if it's an emergency situation or a casual conversation, that's one thing. But you know, you just shut yourself down from work. You know, we were at work last night when we were emailing. Yeah. It was like nine o'clock at night. No, no, no. I was at home when I. Oh, okay. But I was sort of saying like like a casual like you know obviously that <laughs> that commanded some of, of a response that was uh, you're kind of looking to see if I was actually going to be here or not. Ready to go. So, you know, but if it's uh, an order being placed or questions that, that can wait to the next day, yeah. you can tackle it in the morning. And you know, I find it amazing. They used to run entire countries and wars and all sorts of things without email. Yeah. How the I couldn't conduct a, anything without email yeah. now. So how they did it. So what's in the future then for SBC? Right now we're just growing, growing where the wind takes us, and we're trying to, um, you know, again the flashings is our main bread and butter. That's where we're really focused. That's a product we sell nationally, um, internationally. Is it like your actually. own brand, or do you do it for other people? Right. Yeah. So it, we're, it's a product. So we get spec by roofing uh, architects and consultants that go out in the roof and then tell a contractor to use our products because they see oh, okay. it as a, as a great product to use. Um, that's where we get a lot of our, you know, national sales will come from that. And then also Snowball is when a company finds us online and, you know, oh, this is a great product. And we have a lot of uh, other companies that have local sheet metal shops, their own sheet metal shops that they use in-house, um, but will purchase our products because they're able to do it at a much more affordable rate. And then they're able to get quality that they can't achieve uh, in, their, in their shop. I've just read, this is a sheet metal shop. Yep. That's our, our main thing, racks of metal. You're, there's metal all over the floor. Oh, it is dirty, but I yeah. mean, most sheet metal shops are yeah. huge amount of noise, dust, sparks. Yeah, well, well, most of quite... our products are stainless steel, which is very clean material to work with. We also Opposed have to, yeah, uh, okay. smaller components, so we don't have a lot of banging and clanking, big punches and stuff, and all that all that banging and, uh, and big presses and everything. Most of that is you know, uh, cutting parts out or doing stamping something yeah. out. Well, the lasers are cutting all that out. Right, so sorry. when the lasers are on and running, there's a little bit more of a hum and a, yeah. you know, the frequency. What's that? Just know. trying to keep it cool? Yeah, that, that chiller right now is actually keeping it cool. So the, the laser tube itself is a enclosed system, um, but it gets obviously super hot because that beam is coming down as a concentrated light, uh, yeah. light energy. Um, Oh well, there's, you know, laser so, warfare is a thing. So now, so. Yeah, <laughs> so we we have to constantly keep that cool, and in Florida it's a little bit of a challenge. But we uh, yeah. we got to have a chiller to run cool water, keeping it at a 70 degree temperature um, to maintain the. Uh, the Bloody hell! So if people want, need to get in touch with you, yep, uh, they can reach us online, uh, sbclaser.com, uh, sbcflashings.com is our roof flashings of anyways in that world, and then. Uh, or we also have uh, Instagram, SBC Laser, at SBC Laser on Instagram. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so we post up some stuff there and different things. But yeah, and it's ingenious what you can do with a laser. Yep. That absolutely, I mean, I, yeah, I can see how you can get. <laughs> get a little carried away. We've done everything from pool table felt to right, engraving. We've, oh, we've laser cut pumpkins. Into, Laser yeah. cut pumpkin. Yeah, during Halloween, you actually laser cut your artwork on the pumpkin instead of you know something fun for a us. A real pumpkin. Yeah, a real pumpkin. Yeah. I could bring you a real pumpkin. You could laser in. Yeah, you hollow it out, get all the stuffing and all the seeds and everything out, and then you laser cut the actual pumpkin, so you don't have to hand carve it anymore. <laughs> whatever, you, whatever you want to put on. Is that a service you really want to offer? No, it's not a service that we <laughs> offer. It's just something fun that we can do with it. But the, uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, blow. Well, Nick, thank you very yeah. much for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for our templates. Yeah.